everyone. This video plan to share with you how to do the data analysis as similar as seen in the C5 portal yourself. If you want to know why, I will tell you in this video too. If you are working in the cancer genomic research field, then you might be familiar with this platform, C by Portal. It is an open source resource for the interactive exploration of cancer genomic dataset hosted and maintained by the Center for Molecular Oncology at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. C by Portal consists of more than 33 types of the cancers and storing around 300 studies of the cancer results. It's not only a platform that store all this data set, it also have an interface for us to integrate it or to get a quick glance of what type of data in it. You can select your gene of interest in particular cancer cohort and proceed with the analysis yourself. It's very handy and very easy. Of course, CPI portal also allow us to select more than one cancer cohort and do the following analysis. And also, in certain type of the data set, it even provide us some of the warning matches if let's say we choose the cohort that having the overlapping numbers. For example, TGGA here that has been processed by three different institutes and thus then label differently. So when we click them all, they will have the warning message to remind us. However, it becomes a bit tricky if let's say we want to do some in-depth analysis for certain cancer cohort or combining a few cancer cohort. Since they have a lot of the data set, it is quite difficult for them to spot the overlapping sample in different cancer cohort and I think it's also not their obligation to do so. For example, I faced the similar problem when I want to analyze the these two sample sets. Send up to cancer PRAD 2019 and also its 2015 version. When I try to compile them into one single data frame, I didn't notice that the samples are actually overlapping until I spotted that some of the genes they have the similar mutation type but in different sample type. So what it means? Apparently in the 2019 version it has already included all the sample in the 2015 version. In 2019, they have updated the information for the sample type of the patient collected in 2015 and try to subgroup them into two instead of just one. And then the patient ID and sample ID is not similar with the previous version. So it's really tricky if let's say uh, I didn't really notice and try to proceed them and I will have all the overlapping samples appear together in the in the downstream analysis. Anyway, this explains even though CBI portal is very handy and user friendly and uh, it lack of the flexibility to subcategorize the sample as well as lacking accuracy when we try to do the downstream analysis. Mm. So that's why it's good that let's say we can do it from scratch uh, knowing what kind of the data set we need and how to clean and group them accordingly. So good news is GBioPorter also provides us the way to download the data set that has been processed nicely so we can use them directly. So if let's say you want to download the data yourself and do the data cleaning and transformation yourself, here I have three tips to remind you and make things easier. First, start looking at the clinical information. So the download test bar always have one about the clinical information. Always go to read and refer the original paper about how they define the clinical status and also how they actually collect those sample, is it from the primary site or from other tissue part, and also what type of the assay they have done for this kind of the samples. For example, some of them they don't really uh, run the expression analysis, they only contain those mutation information. So take your time to screen, summarize, and cross-check your downloaded data with the original paper. It's just a bit troublesome that there's no standard way to, to jot down all this information shared by all the cancer cohort. So um, we can say that each of them, they might similar, but not exactly same. For example, how they name the sample ID and whether they, they put there the gene external ID or the gene extrinsic ID. So it's all different. Okay, 
So the second one is now you can extract the information that you needed for your downstream analysis. Don't be greedy to retain all the information because it looks really messy. For example, if let's say you want to proceed with the survival analysis, it actually requires three information, time, event, and the group. Another example is we want to construct the on core plot, then you will need a data frame that contains the clinical annotation and also uh, other variables such as mutational type. So this step involves a bit of the mathematical calculation of how we obtain the subgroup total for each of the mutation type. So it is something that we need to do the transformation later on. Okay, the, do the data cleaning. As I mentioned earlier, the naming starts and how they collect the data set is always different from one cancer cohort to another cancer cohort. You will find out that the data sets are always with, come with different naming style. So let's make it a habit to standardize the naming yourself. What I mean here is like the naming for the patient ID and the sample IDs that always uh, present in every set of the data in one single cohort. So um, like say in the expression data set, you have the hyphen here in the patient ID or the sample ID and then if let's say you click on the clinical data set, you have a dot in the patient ID. So it's really annoying uh, to have this kind of different symbol because in R they very sensitive to symbol and not mentioning the capitalized capital letter. So for convenience, um, it's better for us to just convert all type of the symbol into just one, like say it's hyphen. So all the symbol will just use the one hyphen for all the symbols. Yeah, that's easier. So another concern is the copy number alteration. Um, in G by Potter, they have two type of the copy number file, which is one is in physical format. Physical format is have been pre-processed and they have five number threshold to categorize the copy number status. So we can use this to do the subgrouping. Um, however, for some of the data set that do not have the key state file, we need to go back to the original paper to look for the predefined threshold to classify the copy number amplification and deep deletion. Okay, so after you have go to this tree, you now can proceed with the visualization using any tool that you like. So the best thing of doing it yourself is that in the visualization part, you can always customize or beautify using your own style. I like to use ggplot2 because it's really powerful and flexible enough to make the uh, customization of the data visualization. So um, a bit summary of what we could do if let's say we want to DIY the data analysis as we seen in g by Porter. The first is inspect the clinical information referring to their original paper. Try to check that total number of the patient and sample and also how they define the sample type and the way how they process the samples. And secondly, extract only the information that you need. This requires a bit of your biological knowledge about what kind of the data that you want to use and uh, why you want to use it. And thirdly, do the data cleaning and standardize, and standardize the naming style in those data set in order to make it easier for the downstream analysis. This is especially important for those symbol and lecture formats. By working out on this tedious and careful data wrangling and visualization step yourself, you will notice how difficult it is for the back-end bioinformatician to maintain c by portal and also for those studies to really involve in those large consortium uh, collecting clinical patient samples around the world. It takes much effort for those studies to do the data collection, compilation, transformation, and also the presentation. And not mentioning also, we need a deep understanding about the clinical information and how the disease progress from time to time in order for us to make the correct judgment and interpretation. So that's all for my sharing today. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.